What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. The dynamic duo has returned. And thank you for always holding us down. On today's episode, there is a lot to get to all around the NHL as the offseason ranches up, including what's going on with the Pittsburgh Penguins, what happened to the Tampa Bay Lightning's walking wounded, a lot of injuries to take a look at as well, Steel. There is all kinds of news to talk about, including what NHL team has the most on the line for this offseason. It's all coming up on today's episode, people. Let's tap in. You're locked on fantasy hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back inside the lab. That is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel Roden and your boy Big Flip Livingstone. We are back together inside the booth. Thank you to Steel for holding it down. I went solo yesterday as well. And thank you to everyone out there for making us your first listen, regardless of who is in the booth for this podcast. But whoever it is, we do appreciate all the love and support. So please make sure you head out there and check us out Across all platforms, you find your favorite content, including YouTube. You know the drill, baby. Smash that subscribe button. Steel and I really appreciate it. But what we also appreciate on this show, Steel, is a good analysis of what's happening around the league. And now that the NHL season is in the books officially, props due to the Colorado Avalanche, the 2022 Stanley Cup champions, now the attention shifts to all kinds of different topics, Steel. One of them, of course, being all the injuries to the players in the playoffs, including the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're going to get to that right off the top. And we're also going to talk about some rumors that are going around. And that is what the summer is all about, including in Pittsburgh. There's lots of news coming out of the freaking Penguins barn right now, Steel. <laughs> Hard to keep track of things. And then Steel and I are going to serve up who we think has the most on the line this summer in terms of maneuvering this offseason of moves to make sure that they are in the green next season. So, Steele, why don't we talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning not getting it done against the Colorado Avalanche. We knew the mileage factor was going to be something that could hold them back. But when you look at this list of injuries, my goodness, the fact that they were able to get two two wins is still impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive, especially with some of the guys that you're looking at at the list. Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov. Uh, Sorelli, Perry out there, who is an X factor in pretty much every single series uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, It's very hard to look at this list and actually believe that these guys were able to battle through those injuries the entirety of the playoffs, especially Braden Point, because a quad tear is Mm. absolutely probably, you know, one of the most serious injuries out there. You could tell uh, right from when it happened against the Toronto Maple Leafs that he was in severe pain. And yeah. the fact that he was able to play two games in the Stanley Cups, like John Cooper afterwards in the, in the post-game interview, he's like, the fact that he was able to play two games, like he should not be playing until mm-hmm. like October, November time. So yeah. honestly, just like my brain is just absolutely, you know, I, I can't, I honestly just can't comprehend how these guys were able to do it. This is why they get paid the big bucks. And these guys are absolute, uh, absolute beasts out there. So yeah. Again, just kudos to them to making it to the Stanley Cup Finals three years in a row. Uh, just coming up short in a couple of those games, but what a battle it was. There was a lot of discussion, including on this show, about at what point were we going to see the effect of all the hockey on the bodies of the Tampa Bay Lightning roster. You know, kudos due to the front office for keeping a lot of this team intact. Yes, some role players were interchanged and, you know, kudos do again to John Cooper for just, you know, absorbing them into the lineup. But a lot of these key pieces, including the ones you mentioned as Ryan McDonough as well, quote, mangled finger from a block shot in the Rangers series. If you have anything mangled and you're playing the game of hockey at a high level, also playing the defensive position and you're still getting it done, That's just a full stop right there because we know how physical this game is at this time of year. And if any part of your body is mangled and you're still going in there, let alone your finger, like you said, Steele, just all kinds of impressive. But at the end of the day where I think this goes to, and this takes nothing away from what the Colorado Avalanche have accomplished. 
absolutely nothing because they are the deserved Stanley Cup champions. But it can't but help make you think a little bit, Steele. If Sorelli doesn't have a shoulder joint injury, if Paul doesn't also have an MCL sprain and the same shoulder joint injury, Kucherov has an MCL sprain. Can you not help but think, does this series go seven games? We don't know who wins, but I can't help it. That's where my brain goes. <laughs> Tampa Bay with the full roster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it could definitely go seven games. But look, the Colorado Avalanche, and we know this, every single team deals with injuries. And so were the Colorado yep. Avalanche. I saw yep. a picture of Valeri Nachushkin's foot after mm, uh, yes. after game six. And his entire left side of his foot was dark blue and light purple. Mm. It was mm. absolutely disgusting to look at. You talk about a mangled finger. What about playing on a mangled foot? Like, he, yep. was wearing, he was wearing a hotel slipper out of the arena <laughs> that night. He needed medical assistance to put his skate on and off. Like, the fact that he was able to skate in the way yes, he played, continuing sure. to score goals, like, he's going to get a payday as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as well, you and I were just talking about it. Nazem Kadri with, a, with, with his thumb injury, too. You can yeah. tell that hit that that was bothering him significantly as well. For sure. Uh, besides that game winning goal, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, in game five. But again, like these were some serious, serious injuries. And this list, like just again, just looking at this list, it just made it disturbs me. It gives me the chills a little bit because it's just it, it actually pains me to know that these guys were mm -hmm. going through this. But that's what the Stanley Cup battle, that's what you know fighting for a championship is all about getting battling through these injuries and all, all the opponents you have to go through. So again, kudos to them for being able to, you know, get close to being, the, uh, getting the job done. Complete warriors. That is where we can basically leave this conversation and leave the 21, 22 NHL season in the rear view now still, because we are now going to be shifting focus from what was this season into what will will be the next season trust me when i say and i've said it before steel and i have been in the lab cooking up a beauty content plan for the summer that is going to take you through every position every round x factors sleepers veteran guys you still need to keep an eye on i'm talking about everything that you need to know so make sure you hammer that subscribe button and do not miss a single episode of the next season's tee up be ready for your draft do not slip or sleep and tap right into the locked on fantasy hockey podcast you know we'll be also making some bets and coming up around the break we're talking about what's going on in pittsburgh Evgeny Malkin hasn't been spoken to in a while. Christopher Letang is turning down deals. And we're also going to talk about two teams that need to nail this offseason in order to be killers next season. We're making futures bets. And where you need to make those bets is betonline.net, your number one source for your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports development, league reviews, and news, including this year's Major League Baseball, it is in full swing. Get your bets in on Bet Online, your continued source for your wagering info, including live betting, esports, and scores. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA and boxing. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and all the action. Bet Online where the game starts. Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. And make sure you hit the follow and the subscribe button and get all the latest content of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. It means the world to Flip and I. So just thank you so much for all the love and support out there. Let's get into the next hot topic for today's episode. Mm. Uh, Flip. Uh, to me, it looks like there's some trouble brew brewing in Pittsburgh right now. Penguins, mm -hmm. obviously, we both talked about this, you know, off the air and a couple of episodes, you know, back in February where we weren't sure it was very likely that the Penguins were able to keep all three of their superstar players, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang. So, you know, obviously, like you said, not, not regularly been in the talks with Evgeny Malkin since uh, the season ended for them. Uh, they have made a three-year offer to uh, Chris Letang, but he yep. wants five years and north of $8 million, which I just think is absolutely absurd because mm -hmm. a five-year deal, at the end of that, he's he's literally going to be turning 40 years old. And I'm not sure if he's going to be worth $8 million at that point, let alone 
even for the next season. So for me, I, I think it's absurd that he's asking for a five-year, $8 million deal. I think Pittsburgh, you know, they have a plan. They're on the right track of what they want to do with their future. And I think a three-year deal is a little is more than fair more than fair for Chris Latte. Yeah, there's a few different ways you can take a look at this situation in Pittsburgh. And I know that you actually brought up a good point of of Guinea Malkin coming out. And let's start with Malkin is what I was going to say, because everything you're saying about Latang, I agree with. And I'm going to bring up a couple of points in a second about Latang. But I want to start with Malkin because you mentioned, and this is a fact, he came out and said he would like to finish his career as a Pittsburgh Penguin. And as much as I want to believe that, the way that things went down with Pittsburgh last season, you know, I know that it could have gone any way against the Rangers there, but something tells me that Evgeny Malkin might be taking a little sniff around at some options around the NHL. And I really don't know what that actually, and I'm just speaking off the top of my head because this Christopher Latang thing to me is going to get sorted. Five years is crazy. The fact that he wants that. So I agree with you there. Whereas Evgeny Malkin not checking in and not kind of having that open line of communication maybe leaves me more concerned that a deal won't get done there because you're right. They yeah. can't keep all three. So I guess what I'm trying to say in a very long roundabout way is I can see the Latang deal getting done because to me, five years is just posturing. That's yeah. just, that doesn't make sense to me. Whereas when I look at the Malkin thing and them not speaking or having an open line of communication after someone apparently wants to finish their career there that to me smells a bit fishier i don't know what you think about that take look he has been a little bit contra he has been a little bit contradicting himself because yeah he did state that he wants to finish his career in pittsburgh he's loved playing his entire his entire nhl career with the, for, for the penguins organization um but he also stated that he knows that this is a business and he is looking for a little bit of a payday here because he he still believes that he's one of the best players and he is one of the best players out there yeah. still you yeah. know, looking just at his stats from now, like, yeah, he's had, you know, he has been a little bit injury prone dealing with COVID over the last couple of years, which everyone has. But look, he had, he played 41 games this season. He had 42 mm -hmm. points. He was a point mm -hmm. per game player yep. and he has been for the, for pretty much the entirety of his career. So I think you're right. There are some options out there. You know, he might be testing the waters a little bit, but again, it's the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's been here his entire career. It would be honestly sad to see him in a different Jersey. Yeah. But like it is, like it is in every single league and, you know, pretty much in everyday life, it's, it, it's a business and, and you know, yep. that some things are, are give and take. And if they can't get a deal done, then he, he's going to have to go, you know, he's going to have to move his family. He's going to have to go somewhere else. Let me hit you with three points real quick. First of all, you made mention of the injuries on Malkin. I'll say the same thing for Chris Letang. So the fact yeah, that this yes. man is asking for that much money when we've seen some of his track record in terms of, and it's not his fault that he gets injured. I'm just more so speaking of the mileage on his body and the injuries yeah. racking up at a guy his age, like you made a great point of. So that's number one. So I just see that becoming a much more realistic conversation because I just think his request is just a little bit off the charts, but I guess it's because he knows how much offensive def defensemen like him can get paid. So that's just number one. Number two is the Penguins have $23 million in cap yeah. space. So there's a very interesting opportunity and potentially a crossroads here. Do you just maybe invest in one and let the other one go and maybe use some of that money to bring in some fresh blood? We know that Evgeny Malkin also, and this is my third point, got those 42 points in 41 games playing with some scrubs on that second line. A tough year from Kasperi Kapanen. Danton Heinen is a bottom sixer. There are some bad names in the mix there, and he can yeah. still get it done. If I'm Evgeny Malkin and I'm taking a look at some of these teams and some of these players that these teams have on the second line, even in places like I'm throwing out a very random name, but in L.A., who has a very nice cap space and some potential on their second line, I'm just saying, if you're Evgeny Malkin, you take a look at your options here is what I'm getting at, Steele. And I don't know what you think about all those points. Well, look, for me, if I have to keep anyone, it's probably Evgeny Malkin. And and you make yeah. a great point of all of their, you know, depth players that have not been producing over the last couple of years. Danton Hyde and Kasperi Kapanen. Uh, Evan Rodriguez had a phenomenal year this year, but he played half the season with Sidney Crosby and Jake mm -hmm. Edsel or Brian Ross. So yeah. he had those opportunities with the top line exactly. and uh, on the top power play. Kapanen had those opportunities as well with Evgeny Malkin. And he just wasn't producing. So 
I, I think you're right. I think they focus on one of the players, which I think it should be Evgeny Malkin, because I like you said, eight five years, eight million dollars north, not eight million north of eight million dollars. So mm. that deal for Latang to me is just absolutely absurd. You can go on the market. There's a couple, there's a lot of defensemen out this year that are UFAs that you can probably get for five or six million that can help still help you on the blue line. But mm. if you lose Evgeny Malkin, that's a huge hole to fill because pretty much your your all your offense is your top line. Crosby, Gensel, and Brian Russ. If you lose Malkin, you really have to make a splash in the offseason for a big name guy. Yeah, they bring in Ricard Raquel, but we knew he could have been better as well. That's not an answer yeah. for losing a guy like Evgeny Malkin. And I think there's also something to be said, and let's leave this Pittsburgh conversation at this, is remember who he's dealing with in the front office. Brian Burke, in terms of Chris Letang, Brian Burke and Ron Hextall are not going to overpay for a 35-year-old defenseman, yeah. regardless of how thin the market is. And honestly, I'm not trying to poo-poo on Chris Letang because his offensive numbers – are solid. You know, like, honestly, yeah. I have his numbers up here. Aside from the injury concern, Steele, this is a guy that has got it done in his career, a regular 55-plus point career, and he had 68 points this year. So someone might pay him some money, but at the same time, the Pittsburgh Penguins are an aging core, and that doesn't feel like the move. So, again, Brian Burke is not going to throw 8-plus million at Chris Letang. We all know that. So maybe you're right. Maybe it does make sense for them to shift focus on Malkin and pick the pieces up with, I don't know what they have on the back end, but I will end it at this. Brian, uh, Evgeny Malkin, UFA. Ricard Raquel, UFA. Uh, Evan Rodriguez, UFA. Chris Letang, UFA. And in net, a mess. Casey DeSmith and Louis Domingue, UFAs. Yeah. And in one year, Tristan Jari is going to be due for a big payday as well. So you know this money is going to have to be split around because at $3.5 million after the year Tristan Jari had steel, you can double that number at least. Yeah, and and yeah, $7 million probably for a guy like Tristan Jari. And, right? you know, is it, with Casey, Casey DeSmith as a backup, uh, not really playing that well in the regular season, 30 years of age as well. Another older guy, Louis Domingue, who's been a backup his entire NHL career pretty much. Lots of question You're, marks. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks for the Pittsburgh Penguins. But again, just to, I, I think they need to shift focus over to Evgeny Malkin. That's been one of your... Look, all three of those guys, but, you know, obviously we're talking about Latang and Malkin, but these two guys have been a part of the organization for so long. It's 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 obviously a hard conversation to have, but you're right. Ron Hextall and Brian Burke are not going to overpay for a 35-year-old defenseman. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen, pal. But this is one of the things about the offseason where some of these teams have a lot on the line. I know you and I are going to talk about a team each coming up right here in a second, but... Pittsburgh Penguins could easily have been one of those selections because there is a lot on the line for them. And I mentioned it yesterday, the Colorado Avalanche have a lot of big UFAs as well, including their starting goaltender. So something tells me we're in store for a very wild summer. Even more reason to stay tuned and locked in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. So please hit the follow. Please hit the subscribe button. Flip and I appreciate it so much. And thank you so much for all the love and support out there and for tuning in for today's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And let's get right into the last segment of today's episode. Looking into the offseason season off season and which team should make a huge splash to really turn around uh, the season they just had. Let's do it, Steele. And look, uh, you and I joked a little bit off air about who we were going to take a look at. And honestly, I alluded to it a little bit yesterday, and I'm going to stay away from it because I think it is almost one of the obvious ones that it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that's not my team that I'm going to talk about, but I think there is a lot to be said about what's going on in Toronto, especially when I don't know if you took a look at the updated Stanley Cup odds for next season in terms of a picking a winner. Right there after the Colorado Avalanche and Tampa Bay Lightning, the Toronto Maple Leafs have the even odds at plus 900 without really knowing who's going to play number one or number two in net. So that's just one thing. I'll throw that out there. Maybe we'll save that for another episode altogether. But my team steal is the Edmonton Oilers. 
a team that is another one that does not have a number one or a number two or even maybe a number three. So if Stuart Skinner, it has to be the answer in net here for the Edmonton <laughs> Oilers. I just don't know what's going on out West, honestly. And Ken Holland is a well-respected GM, but he has his work cut out for him, Steele. We know that he's likely not going to be able to afford a Vander Kane, but he also has Kyler Yamamoto, Yessi Puljujarvi as RFAs. He has no defensemen, and he has Brett Kulak, one of the guys they leaned on heavily in the playoffs as a UFA as well. Miko Koskinen's already left for Europe. That's done. And if you have to lean on Mike Smith again, Steele, after the playoffs we saw from Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, which almost goes to prove that those two guys are good enough to get it done on their own, to me, Ken Holland has the offseason to lose here because if they squander another year of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, I can't help but feel that those two guys start to take a serious look at their agents and go, get me out of here. Am I off the mark there? No, I think you're right on the mark. Uh, and this is exactly what we've been saying about some of the Toronto Maple Leaf guys. So I like the correlation there Thank with, you. you know, guys like Austin Matthews, uh, you. you know, Mitch Barner, guys like that who want to win in the place that they are right now, but it just seems like they can't get the job done. And, you know, obviously for the Edmonton Oilers finally getting to uh, past the second round, past the first round, making it to the conference finals. So mm -hmm. uh, congrats there. But that's obviously not getting the job done. They want to be in the Stanley Cup yeah. finals. They want to be the Colorado Avalanche and do what yeah. they did this season yes. and lift the Stanley Cup. So I think you're right on the mark. They have a tough offseason for them, uh, especially looking at, you know, probably, again, like the Maple Leafs, looking to get two goalies because, because both their goalies are gone now. Um, so a lot of a lot of things for the Edmonton Oilers to do in the offseason. But for me, I'm looking out east and I'm looking at one of the teams at the bottom of the barrel. And I'm looking at the New Jersey Devils. And I mm. think if they can okay. make a big splash in this offseason, I think this can really jumpstart their team into 2022, 2023 and be a, a, you know, a competitive team and actually contend to be a playoff team as well. Because this is a very young team. They have a young core right now. Yes. And you and I have talked about a lot of those players, especially Jack Hughes. He needs to be bigger, same as Nico Heischer, need to get bigger, need to be a little bit more physical and uh, not get pushed around so much, which we saw over the last couple of seasons. Again, it's also a health thing. They need to get bigger because it's a health issue as well because they've dealt with those injuries. But for me, they've got $25 million in cap space. Goalies are going to be a hot commodity this year. And I think one of those goalies they need to target is Stanley Cup champion, either Darcy Kemper or target Jack Campbell, because he's looking mm. for a, a little bit of money too. And they can afford a guy like Jack Campbell and use Mackenzie Blackwood as a backup option because he would be a stellar backup. Steele, slow down, pal, because everything you're putting down here, I'm feeling. I could see Darcy Kemper as a major New Jersey Devils move. Yeah. But if we're on the topic and you brought up Jack Campbell, so we're that close to the Leafs, I can also <laughs> see him going to Toronto, and I don't want that to happen as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. But I could see it. I could Look, see it. it. That could definitely happen too, but I'm not sure if the Leafs would be able to afford it if they can't afford Jack Campbell. But let me not stop there because there's some other offseason season. Uh, moves I'm looking towards for the Devils as well. Not just the goalie. So goalie okay. is the number one option. They need a goalie. That was a huge struggle this season. Mm -hmm. obviously, obviously using a lot of those uh, those backup tenders uh, because of Mackenzie Blackwood's situation. But I'm looking offensively as well. If they can make a... They've been linked to be very interested in a guy like Johnny Goudreau. But if you can't get a guy Whoa. like Johnny Goudreau, Whoa. look at Philip Forsberg. Philip Forsberg and the Nashville mm. Predators have not been close to getting a deal done whatsoever. So he's going to be a hot commodity as well. If they can get one of those superstar players to join this young core right now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, what a turnaround it would be for the New Jersey, New Jersey Devils. But on top of that, on top of that, mm -hmm. I still think this is a bit, again, I said this before, I think this is a, this is a very young team. Yeah. They need to, they need a little bit of leadership and some physicality and a little bit uh, aggressiveness, aggressiveness to their team as well. So why not a guy like Dustin Brown? Obviously I don't think Dustin Brown is going to leave the LA Kings, but a guy like Dustin Brown, a little bit on the, uh, on the older side, he's 37 mm. years old. Mm. He's been a leader pretty much his entire career. 
and he's a physical guy that can bring a real uh, real presence in the dressing room and on the ice for the Devils. I'm pretty sure he announced that he is retiring. I'm not oh, yeah, sure. yeah, he is retiring. Sorry, but, a guy like Dustin Brown. But what you're saying about the character there, that mix, and because look, he's here. Jack Hughes, when he's healthy. Sharangovich. Even guys like Dawson Mercer, rookie, who had a great year. Jesper Bratt. There is a lot to like. There is a lot of young, up-and-coming talent. And I really appreciate that you're highlighting a Devils team that no one really talks about a lot. So everything that you're saying there could check out. And what I wanted to also just leave this at is Mackenzie Blackwood, if they can find a number one. All of a sudden, what's been a weakness since since Martin Brodeau retired. Yep is now all of a sudden a strength. And last year they had a rotating cast of characters in that blue paint. Um, but I really appreciate you highlighting this deal because Damon Sever Severson is coming off, Severson, Severson, whatever, is coming off a great offensive season. You have Dougie Hamilton, Ryan Graves, very serviceable. Also, how is Ryan Graves getting paid $3.1 million? Good for his agent. Um, and there's some also some good talent coming up their pipeline. So, I love that we're highlighting the New Jersey Devils. I think they are going to be an active partner because of some of these young pieces that they have available. Um, and secondly, I really do think the Edmonton Oilers have a lot on the line in this offseason. And if you're Ken Holland, you can't help but feel the eyes of Leon Dreisaitl's camp yeah. and Connor McDavid's camp right on top of you. Because I know they've been nothing but loyal and they've said all the right things. They are way too good to have Mike Smith be the guy that's counted on and guys like Cody CC and Tyson Berry be thrown out there as much as they had. I'm sorry, Steele, but if you think you and I know hockey, if these guys are paying attention, they don't want to be part of this Edmonton Oilers team too much longer unless this offseason is a fruitful one. Stay tuned all offseason long because Steele and I will be here to break it all down for you. Hundo P. Yes, sir. And, and look, Ken Holland cannot fumble the bag this offseason. He has to hold on to it tight. Hmm. Tight grip on that thing, Ken Holland. Yes, sir. You can't lose a guy like Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. So, again, I think we said this a lot, but the goalie situation at Edmonton obviously needs to be addressed. It's going to be addressed because they've pretty much lost both their goalies. Uh, they gave yeah. Mike Smith till the uh, beginning of July, I believe, to, to make his decision if he's retiring. So, Ken Holland has a lot on his hands. Tom Fitzgerald has a lot on his, on his hands. Uh, and Kyle Dubas. He has a lot on his hands as well. So mm. a lot of GMs out there are gonna hopefully going to make some off-season splashes. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast, which also includes YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. And once you do, you'll get all the latest episodes of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast as soon as they're available each and every day, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Don't miss out on all the content coming this summer. Like Flip said, mock drafts, top fives. Uh, we're going to be talking about it all. We're going to get into the draft as well. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.